Hello everyone, welcome back to the video sessions of Verbal Reasoning. Today we are going to do statement conclusions. I think in the previous video I've recorded up with statement assumptions. I'm sure that you would have watched that. If you have not, please watch it because there is a linking concept uh, which links to our statement conclusion. However, a very easy chapter. It's easier than assumptions if you find uh, assumptions a bit complex. I think this is going to ease uh, you up. It's 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 a easier uh, concepts as well as in application with respect to my assumptions. So what the agenda today is about three things. We are going to quickly learn uh, what are conclusions and then understand the concepts and we'll uh, solve some 14, 15 questions with respect to the application of the concept. So without much ado, let's get started now. I'm sure conclusions in general in life is basically deductions, inferences that we draw and the derivatives that we particularly uh, look at. For example, all males are humans, Ram is a male, so Ram is a human. So uh, deductive reasoning, since sports is good, is so we should be, it, it should be made compulsory, inductive reasoning. So we conclude uh, conclusions out of the information that are given to us on different basis, on a regular basis. However, what makes it interesting in uh, terms of our examination perspective is these four concepts. Again, with the mnemonic I have developed is the NAPS. If you just quickly remember uh, the NAPS, uh, it will really help you apply these concepts. And these are the checkpoints that you need to keep in mind when it comes to uh, uh, the statement conclusions. Now, in assumptions, statements, uh, uh, assumptions, is just the opposite of what statement conclusions is, or I can say statement conclusions is just quite the opposite of what the statement assumptions was. In assumptions, I told you they are pre-statements, but conclusions are always the post-statements. These are the ideas or notions that are considered or should be considered after something has happened or after something that you have declared. So post the event, these assumptions were unstated ideas while the conclusions are supposed to be stated ideas. So you have to either directly or indirectly express some idea. Only then I can conclude something from the given expressions. Also assumptions were from speaker's perspective, but audience are always from the audience's perspective or the listener's perspective, the person who's observing, the person who's reading, the person who's listening that particular statement or even, so uh, you can say, we conclude something about it. And the most important concept that we need to keep in mind is that conclusions are never, never based on assumptions. Now, what do I mean by assumptions? Assumptions are the unstated idea. So if you have not stated anything up, either directly or indirectly, I cannot conclude anything. To sum this up, these four concepts, NAPS is the mnemonic that you need to just remember. No big concepts allowed involved into this. Uh, just remember the NAPS, which is not based on assumptions. It's on the audience or the listener's mindset post the statements and stated ideas either directly or indirectly. Let's look at an example to make you understand what do I mean by it. For example, if the statements are both India and Pakistan are democratic countries, both have democratically elected prime ministers and both the prime ministers want peace. Now, from these three statements, in combination, can I say India and Pakistan are neighboring countries? I mean, in reality, yes, I can conclude. But with respect to the given statements, I cannot conclude that India and Pakistan are neighboring countries. However, also look at the second one. India and Pakistan will not have a nuclear war. Now, some of you might say that if they want peace, yes, it's, it seems true. But again, there is an assumption that we are making that anybody who wants peace does not have a war. Let's look at Ukraine, for example. Ukraine might demand a uh, peace anytime, but it had had a long war. So understand they are assumptions implicit into this and the NAPS concepts say that you should never base a conclusion on the basis of assumptions that are involved. So there are assumptions, for example, is, we are also assuming that India and Pakistan are nuclear capable countries. We are also assuming that PMs reflective of the sentiments of the country because we want, the prime ministers want peace. Here, uh, India and Pakistan are, are given as having a war. So also that is a kind of assumption that we're making. And then obviously, what are the missing links in the conclusions and the statements that are what are also uh, termed as the unstated 
assumptions and we need to keep in mind that what are the unstated assumptions so if if something is not clearly stated up uh, it's not given i think we'll refrain from taking that as a valid conclusion or taking valid conclusion about that particular scenario now having said that again uh, let's quickly apply to the questions i'm sure that you would have already solved the sheet uh, this is a few important slide that you can just quickly take a snapshot of you can pause it i just have summed up kind of assumptions and conclusions and one bridge because these often chapters are asked into uh, one another uh, for example in questions of implicit statements and assumptions they can give you options which are conclusions and vice versa like they can ask you which of the for which of the following can be the valid conclusions and they can give you options which are seemingly assumptions so just keep in mind that how do we track or how do we bifurcate these two remember assumptions are the five checkpoints pre statements uh, prerequisite conditions they are kind of unstated ideas they are both from speaker's perspective and kind of something that are required for the statement to be true however on the contrary conclusions are not based on any assumption the naps that are they are not state any unstated ideas they need to be hinted they need to be implied uh, clearly either directly or indirectly they are not suggestions or advices okay you can't just advise it Ad advices and suggestions belong to something called as course of action so we're going to learn course of action also i'm going to make a video on it it's a very easy chapter but please remember conclusions are not advices or course of action or suggestions that you can give uh they are stated ideas either directly or indirectly and they are always taken from a speaker's uh, not from the speaker's perspective but from the audience perspective from the listener's perspective and obviously conclusions will happen post the statement that is given now without much ado let's get started with the conclusion sheet i think uh, let's look at the 31st question so if you have not solved the sheet you can just solve it along with me pause the video pause per question uh, or you can just solve the sheet uh, and then uh, look at the discussion so free and fair elections have been held in taliban and the extremists could not stop them the government must be complimented for it so very interesting idea that he has given is a government must be complimented for it so government could have taken advantage of the situation i think this is more of a assumption ground and therefore not a good conclusion the government has tackled the problems of extremists decently enough i think valid and uh, if you look at the code a says both one is follow is b, b says only two follow c says both follow and d says neither follow so i think we're going to go with bombay as the correct answer for this one let's move to the next question i think a similar question that i just declared both india and pakistan are democratic countries both have democratically elected prime ministers and both the prime ministers uh, both prime ministers want peace so india and pakistan are unlikely to follow the path of confrontation okay so uh, uh, you're just assuming that anybody who want peace will not uh, take the path of confrontation and there is an unlikelihood of it so he's not definitely confirming it uh, he's trying to say that they are unlikely to follow so i think that is one thing that we can clearly uh, pick up from it and india and pakistan are neighboring countries definitely not so this is going to be the a 33rd many people are endowed with plentiful time isling away time is a sign of high status for them affluent people idle away time so you cannot attribute it and make it causative means this is the cause and therefore that this is the result so definitely not concluded and good fortune makes people idle so we do not know we have not given the reasons of why people are idle and besides even if we did would have these are more or less assumptions not conclusions so answer to this question will definitely go as delhi none of them follow the next one time saving devices constitute a new work culture this culture removes sloth and india needs it badly the construction of this question is very great so uh, let me just doodle it a little bit and and just deconstruct it for you so time saving devices constitute a new work culture and this new work culture actually removes sloth and uh, what does india need badly is the removal of the sloth so is the new work culture that india needs badly so saying that india doesn't have time saving devices 
is going to be a problem because uh, you look at it logically i mean i say a gives us b and then b uh, removes c so i need b doesn't mean i can conclude anything about a a is a question okay and then all indians are very slothful slow and slothful is again not a valid one because you're just judging up that uh, you know indians are slow and slothful while we need a culture maybe not all indians are so the answer will go as Delhi. 35th, the planning commission is opposed to the proposal. It feels that the cost of subsidizing helicopters operation will be exorbitant. Exorbitant means huge. So the planning commission wants the government to spend lens. I, the interesting point is that we can't assess what is the planning commission's desire or the agenda. And this wanting is all going more into assumptions. So we can assume that is the reason why they have opposed, but we can't conclude. And then they must be subsidized as a suggestion or an advice. Therefore, invalid answer will go as Delhi. Let's move to the next. The population below the poverty line is com computed on the basis of minimum daily calories requirement of food and actual consumption. 48% of India's population lives below the poverty line. 48% of people in India do not get the required calories. Absolutely correct. Because if you combine this sentence with this sentence, absolutely you can say that 48% of the people in India do not get required calories of food. Poverty is India's biggest problems. We are not discussing problems. So I think uh, because of this word, this, this assumption goes out and therefore the correct answer will become A. Next one, the policy of liberalization will make the rich richer and the poor poorer. The disparity between the rich and the poor will widen. So if the policy of liberalization is going to increase the disparity, I think that is one valid conclusion. Liberalization is not good. We are not here to comment whether it is good or bad for it because you are assuming that if the, uh, the disparity between the rich and the poor will widen, it is not going to be good for India. I think India is nowhere mentioned also. So uh, I think that is definitely making it a non-conclusive statement the rich believe in liberalization i i to, again uh, who's the policy maker is not given and therefore definitely invalid answer definitely go as delhi next one national integration cannot be achieved there are contrasts between the rich and the poor and the different religious groups so basically the contrast of any type is is responsible for the national integration not being achieved so contrast hinder integration absolutely correct so contrast of any type between rich and poor and different religious group might hinder the national integration so if i combine the first and the second statement i get this national integration is essential for india i think we are not talking about the essentiality for india he is saying that it cannot be achieved but i don't know whether it is essential for india or not so i think besides this becomes a more of an assumption uh, than a conclusion and therefore invalid a next one a simple dna test can predict whether someone is more likely to lose weight on a low fat diet so what is going to predict a simple dna test can predict uh, or a low high book says the us researchers their study looked at how well people with different genes fared on the different weight loss diet so what is the basis of the us researchers is given here the people's body react to certain nutrients differently and is related to their genetic makeup so i think that is what the reports assess is and therefore can be concluded a better understanding of one's genetic makeup helps in charting out one diet pattern to lose i think that is what the aim of the research is and therefore the uh, the listener or the person who is receiving this can definitely conclude both and therefore the answer will go as c both of them can be concluded next one there are glaring inequalities between man and man laws can ensure an ordered society but only the hard work will help us achieve the social objective of economic goals only hard work can remove economic inequalities now uh, it looks good at a prima facie but if you look at this he was saying social objective of economic goals but he never declared what was the social objective of economic goals so we cannot just assume that it is about removing the inequality so um, partly assumption so remember conclusions are never based on assumptions so naps is one thing that we need to keep in mind 
therefore invalid and economic equality is more important than discipline i mean where is discipline coming from so uh, alien idea and therefore again answer is delhi a deadlock persists for the fourth consecutive day despite the hectic efforts then a meeting between prime minister and the consumers farmers were leaders were arranged meeting with the prime minister ended the deadlock i do not know the result of the meeting so this is far fetched the result of the meeting is unknown so this is far fetched cannot be concluded the meeting between the prime minister and the farmers was a result of hectic efforts i mean that is also not causative right because you cannot say see prime minister could have been out you were even they were not able to meet despite the hectic efforts then the prime minister meeting was arrived so maybe the prime minister was not in the country so we can it's 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 absurd to conclude that it was a result of the hectic efforts right i mean there is a possibility so this could have been a good assumption but not a good conclusion next beauty is god's gift and everything and everyone has beauty but not everyone identifies it oh this was a very good one but not everyone identifies it i think in syllogisms i told you if you watch that video carefully that the logical equivalent of not all of us are mad is equals to some of us are not mad so this this statement emphasizes logically that some of us are not able to identify beauty and not that some people identify beauty i mean this is something that is directly hinted and this is a inference that we draw from this so i think this is the reason why the as now conclusion number 1 is invalid but the conclusion number 1 is valid because the word ubiquitous means something that is omnipresent something that is present in everyone and everything so the answer to this question will become bombay Let's move to the next one. The function of science is to supply reliable and relevant information to the society. Its information is reliable due to its elaborate technique of verification, and also because such information is capable of surviving for centuries. So, scientific information is beyond the scope of revision. Uh, again, there is no talk of revision because we can modify it. So, let's. cancel this out this is definitely not concluded scientific information is verifiable i think yes the elaborate technique of verification so this is a valid conclusion so answer to the 43rd becomes pombe next one it is sometimes assumed that corruption is due to poverty and gross disparity so he is saying it is sometimes assumed that why what is the reasons of corruption so corruption happens because of poverty and disparity and then he contrasts it. but it is an uncalled for slur on the poor because the poor in india are among the most upright people so uh, he is saying but this is not good because poor are actually honest so actually uh, he is implying that corruption is because of the powerful or the rich people rather than the poor so can i conclude that upright people cannot be corrupt i think yes that that's that's sensible i mean it's just like saying the good cannot be bad so it's it's perfectly fine and then disparities of income make the people corrupt i think that is attributive that is again causative uh, causative means it is responsible for it which becomes a problem and therefore uh, not allowed so answer is a the last question the 15th one the journey towards receiving a national board certification can be very eventful as challenging but equally rewarding teachers are allowed many retakes if they do not receive a pass score in the first time round there is a lot of work that goes into receiving this certification to reward the extra effort it, it takes to receive this schools across the united states are providing great incentives for teachers to pursue it surely receiving an nbc strengthens one's teaching skill which consequently improves students learning now many schools in the united states have identified the merits nbc entails although the journey towards receiving it may cause some easiness now that is a probable conclusion which we cannot deny from this event and therefore becomes valid however if this may would not have been here this conclusion was invalid i mean the former part is fine that it have identified the merits of nbc entails but the journey causes easiness uneasiness is something that we could not have concluded then nbc provides a huge financial curve for teachers 
and in the longer run can benefit again is a probable conclusion which again we can derive from the given information we cannot deny the conclusion and therefore we have to accept it so answer to this question becomes c so all in all it's a very easy take guys it's not at all a painful chapter to uh, decipher i think conclusions have a higher accuracy than assumptions uh, i hope you have uh, uh, understood the concepts so that's all from my side i think you can find me on telegram and see you in the next video thanks for watching and learning bye bye